death to the unholy. Three days and three nights hanged upon the cross, purified by the fires of heaven. Death. Uh, wh what's going on? I, I, I never summoned this thing. Hello and welcome. I'm Ash Mannix. And this is the house in Fata Morgana. In the last part of the playthrough, things were I kind of got quite um, emotional. We we um, unlocked the door, and um, so in the past, when um, Morgana was still alive, stuck in the tower, we got the three keys and we unlocked and opened the door, and she was there, but she was half delusional delusional and she had split had a split personality as well that she was talking to which um was a lot for um Michelle to take um a lot for us to take on it was quite it was quite bad and um she saw uh, Michelle as an angel I mean, he looks like one. Um, and sh showing pity for her in that sorrowful state, shall play the part of the angel, having come to save um, Morgana, sent by God. Um, and in his arms, she finally passed away, unexpectedly, because the expectation was that... Um, if we had got, if we get there before the the day of her supposed death, then um, we'd be able to save her. That was the assumption that we uh, Michelle had made, and I think we had all made as a, or I had made as well. And it was not to be. But afterwards, all three men, um, the swordsman, the lord who is not the lord, and uh, Mel had decided that they will take responsibility for the cruel things that whether they had intentionally or unintentionally done had uh, at the end of the day committed and so they they resolved themselves to go in front of the crowd of people that had um, uh, the, the people waiting there for the uh, the celebration that they were supposed to have and they were going to unveil to everyone the truth of what this miracle elixir, um, this healing cure really was. But things took a slight turn for, a slightly weird turn after that. Everything was covered in blood and we were still in um, a lot of trouble. Well, nothing had really changed. And it was at that point that Chad made the realisation that this isn't the past. This is just, again, which Morgana is showing Michelle the past, and uh, but it was all made up. We were not really pa set into the past, we were just in the memories of the witch Morgana. And, um, yeah, so <laughs> we, we actually came across the white-haired girl, and it turns out that she is a part she is the witch morgana or a part of her that split off from her all the things that she wanted to let go of and when she died the good sides of her the sides it's you know the part of her that was like um the saintly part the, the part that wanted to do right that um put everyone else um first before herself all those things and she'd split herself in two and so this side of her who had confronted us at that point asked us to to kill her so that she could eventually um be reborn back uh like m go back to the other part of well join the witch morgana and be reborn because apparently the witch morgana cannot die properly and be reborn until she is killed or something like that and we did we did um and then we find ourselves back, I think, in the present time. Uh, or, or whatever goes for the present time in the house. 
uh, in Fata Morgana. And we confronted Morgana. And she took off her, her hood. And we saw the face of what she would have looked like without those scars. Quite an attractive woman. I mean, as the white-haired girl, she's quite attractive. And, you know, it just changed the, the, the colouring of the hair and the eyes to... Uh, um, well, brown hair or whatnot, and or red hair? Was she red haired? Um, but anyway, yes, quite the looker. Um, and I think we had stopped it there. So yes, let us um, let us carry on, shall we? Let's inspect the memories. Revolution is what it was called. I will switch. Let's go to the full screen and let's go in. And there she is, and she just disappears. Um. I love this music. I'm just gonna, I love the music in this. I love the art style. I love the story. Um, suffice to say, I love this visual novel. Um, <clears throat> hand in hand, we travel the cursed mansion's corridors. The halls overflow with darkness, cut off from the sun and devoid of color. Despite having spent much time in this place, has never stopped being depressingly gloomy. No one, for any reason, should be left behind in a place like this. We cross through the living room, making our way to the back garden door. There are no children laughing beyond the door. But I can faintly smell flowers. Michelle, what am I supposed to say to them? Ah, yes. So, at, we are at the point, if I remember correctly, where the witch Morgana is going to now confront the three men who have unveiled their reasoning for why they did what they did, which we hope changes Morgana's view of them slightly, at least. I think she's now going to confront them in the places where they've been imprisoned in the house in the mansion <clears throat> if nothing comes to mind you don't have to say anything I get the feeling they'll have something to say to you though so if you would try to hear them out I'm not looking forward to this it'll go fine I promise Nothing that happens could possibly make things worse than they already are. The only way to go from here is up. So up we go. Let's go then, I suppose. A hollow breeze brushes through the grey-filled rose garden. The shadow standing there turns toward us. It gradually starts looking more and more like the young man it once was. Morgana? I, um... It's okay. We're here to free your soul. Ah, yes, okay, this is the aim. To free their souls. From the eternal torment they've been going through up to this point. Michelle? You forgive me for what I did, Morgana. No, I don't. All this means is I'm not gun cursing you. Ah. Uh, either way. Thank you. I, I know what I'm doing here now. Or I guess I remember what I'm doing here. I deserve to be cursed after everything I've done to you. Can't have been easy, that's for sure. I'm sorry for all the pain I caused. What's done is done, I guess. Still, I wasn't lying when I said I wanted to be friends. I meant it. I really did. I know now why you did what you did, why you sold me out. Some people might say you had no other choice, but as the girl you actually sold out, 
Those are words you'll never hear from my lips. Fair enough. Nonetheless, objectively speaking, you too were a victim. And do you not resent me for punishing you in spite of that? Huh? I presume you're now able to recall everything, both your first life and the second one I subjected you to when the house was called Rose Manor. Yeah? What happened then was the result of my wish. You have every right to despise me. The way I see it, whether or without your curse, Nelly still would have had the same feelings for me. It was my fault for being too dense to realise she thought of me as more than a brother. Things would have turned out the way they did regardless. The white-haired girl was a spark that set her off, though. And it was because of me that she ended up at the mansion. My wish was to see your life utterly ruined. And in service of that desire, the white-haired girl was born into that era as your half-sister. So I disagree. My curse did play a significant role in your fate. Regardless, I don't feel like it would be right of me to blame you. Things turned out the way they did, because I was weak and ran from the problem instead of facing it. Michelle wouldn't have had to get hurt either if only I'd had more of a spine. Um, I guess calling her Michelle is kind of confusing with Michelle here, huh? How should I refer to her then? Girl Michelle, maybe? Creativity is not your strong suit, is it? <laughs> she wouldn't happen to be around, would she? She has departed from this world. Or, perhaps it would be better to say she returned to her rightful place in it. The girl you knew as Michelle is gone forever. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I was hoping I could apologize to her too. I believe you've made your feelings quite clear. Not that she would hold it against you if you didn't apologize. That's simply her nature. Oh. Well, Morgana, so, so sorry for everything. I'm going to free your soul from the bonds of this cursed mansion, after which you would return to its r r rightful place. Okay. But before that, I've got one last thing I'd like to say to you, Michelle. To me? It was a little hazy, but I did kind of get to see what you were up to until just a little bit ago. If you hadn't done what you did for me, for Nelly, for Morgana, for everyone, I'm not sure I would have been able to work up the guts to apologise. I'm pretty sure I would have still been convinced I wasn't at fault. It may not have been real, but your effort wasn't in vain. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I guess this is goodbye. A farewell, Mel. Until our souls cross paths once more in the boundless sphere of fate. Goodbye, Morgana. Hmm. You don't have to tell me that he wasn't a bad person. But bad people aren't the only ones who do bad things. That's true, yes. But having a conscience can be a double-edged sword. The regret so overwhelming you don't want to believe you could do something so awful that some outside force must be to blame. So I hope you're willing to accept at least part of his apology. Lead the way, my dear. To where the next soul waits.
The staircase leading to the cellar is quiet, the air is still. No sounds of flesh being devoured, no stench of blood. Just darkness reached ever downward. I'm going to have to ask you to go in first at this time. I don't mind, but why? I'd rather not be skewered. It'll be fine, I'm sure. I doubt he'll attack. I can't say I'm anywhere near as confident as you. So you get to be my meat shield should anything go wrong. Ah, so that's what I am to her. We may not have bodies, but we are still capable of feeling pain. You don't have to remind me. I have to say, I'm surprised you actually made it to the top of the tower. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Half and half. I'll... Even though she's been pretty cruel, though I can justified to a degree, I like Morgana. <laughs> Regardless, don't assume you're safe just because you're already dead. If you were to attack and destroy your soul, You'd be erased for all eternity. There would be no coming back in any shape or form after any amount of time. Just something to keep in mind. I'm not worried. We shouldn't have any trouble talking to him. If you say so, then off we go. I push open the cellar door. Behind it, a shadow of a man sits on the floor, leaning against a stack of boxes. He slowly rises to his feet, to his feet upon hearing us enter. And as he does, the blackness dissolves away, revealing the man. I almost didn't recognize you. Your face, it's not how I remember. It's back to normal. I see. So you weren't a witch. You were a pretty human girl. <laughs> I think that's his way of complimenting her. You look a little like the blind girl. No, I do not. Not one bit. Wait, who's the blind girl? I can't remember who who's the blind girl? Ah, I remember now. The white haired girl in his second life when we were watching the story unfold with him and when he became the beast and he was in the mansion. Of course, I forgot she was blind in that one. If anything, he looks far more like her than I. White hair, red eyes. They even have almost the same name. I think comparing her to a large, dour-looking man is a bit... disrespectful. Don't pretend you look any more approachable. <laughs> He's not even half the man you think he is. Was that really necessary, Morgana? He is a man. He's indisputably a man. No matter what reason you have to claim otherwise. Then... <laughs> Actually, can angels be male or female? Can you please cut it out with the angel thing already? So... What brings you two down here? We're here to free your soul. You're forgiving me? Absolutely not. However, I've decided there's no point in punishing you any further. I see. You are, in no uncertain terms, one of the most evil men I've ever encountered. I... 
can hardly argue with that. Should you so desire, I can eradicate you. Morgana, what are... Let me finish, Michelle. Instead of letting your soul return, I can erase it. Your existence is a scar in the world. The allure of killing is too strong for you to resist. Even without any curse, you'd bring pain and misfortune on others. You're right, and that would probably be for the best. The world would be better off without me. And I know that. I do. But I don't want to disappear. As you wish, then I will release your soul. Before I go, allow me to burn this into my soul. You must resist temptation if you are to blend in. So in my next life, I won't be a killer. I suppose it's worth trying. Do your best. I will. Farewell, Yukimasa. Oh, we never, we never got the swordsman's name. Until our souls cross paths once more in the boundless sphere of fate. Farewell, Morgana. We're saying goodbye to everyone. This is, I don't know. After so long. He's not the only one who derived pleasure from others' pain. Morgana. It's strange. Setting them free, I both feel like a weight's been lifted. And like I'm the greatest villain of them all. Perhaps by forgiving them, you can come to forgive yourself. But if I forgive them, what does that make everything I've done up to now? Hmm. No answer. The first step toward moving on. Could you forgive those who wronged you then? The woman who tormented you? Your brother who made a mockery of you? Your eldest brother who took your life? Your mother, so unwilling to accept you, she burned you at the stake? The villagers who falsely accused you of being a witch? Your father who raped the woman you love? Could you forgive them? If they were willing to repent. Damn, Michelle. And if you, they weren't, what if they showed up in t intent in causing you more pain? Then I... I suppose I'm not acting much better than any of them right now. Let's go. We have one more soul to free. Oh, yes, the Lord. Oh, one, one sec. One. Just gonna have to pause the recording for a sec. Well, let this. I have to pause here if I can sorry about that there's something I've been meaning to ask you is Giselle really there with you because I can't sense her at all If she were in the mansion, I would know. But I can't feel her presence anywhere. Be honest with me. You can't feel her either, can you? I... Are you sure her soul hasn't extinguished? She's here. I'm certain of it. Lost somewhere deep in the mansion's darkness. 
Once we've purged that darkness, she should be free to return. I have faith in her. I see. Well, I'm not sure how much this means coming from me. But I hope you see her again. I will. And thank you. I'm... I'm actually rather fond of her, Giselle. Although I suppose it's hard not to get a little attached to someone you've spent several hundred years with. Just attached. Giselle, she's fairly fond of you herself. I can only hope... The smell of cigarette smoke seeps through the cracks in the den door. It's perfectly quiet behind it, however. No chatter or clacking of billiard balls. Morgana appears slightly reluctant to step through the door. Or perhaps she's tense. Shall we? Her hand in mine. Oh, we're holding her hand this whole time. I push open the door. A shadow is perched on the edge of a dark green rectangular table. He freezes for a moment when he hears us enter. Quickly finding his composure and marching toward us, determination in his step. The shadows dissolve, revealing the man. Morgana. <clears throat> Your face, it healed. It did. It's been a long time coming. And would you look at that, not a let down. <laughs> Was it him that healed you? Yes, it was him. Well, I'll be. I was always hoping I'd be the one to have the honour. You lost that qualification when you... Yeah, I know. I'm the one who made you into the witch. The one who killed you. I don't expect or deserve your forgiveness. I'd still like a chance to make amends in any way you wish. Even if it means being cursed for all eternity. I'm here to release your soul. Once that's done, that's it from me. No curses, no forgiveness. Nothing. Huh. So you're cutting ties completely. Damn. Truthfully, I had no idea how you felt about me. But that ship sailed long ago. Far, far too long ago. I know. Nothing can change how I feel about you. Not anymore. I bet. I'm going to release your soul now. Could you hold off on that a moment? I don't expect you to reciprocate, or even accept. But if I don't put my feelings into words, I'll never get them through to you. I think that's how she put it anyway. So I ask for this one last chance to put them into words. Morgana. Fine. The girl with the white hair, my wife. Michelle, what of her? Something about that name always felt off to me. I could never shake the feeling that calling her that was somehow wrong. When I first saw her, first saw that smile, I was dead certain that she was what had always been missing from my life. That I had finally found what I had been searching for. 
And now, I know why. Because I felt you in her, the memories of you ingrained on my soul. You should know better than anyone that we're nothing alike. That girl wouldn't say anything remotely impolite even if you held a knife to her throat. You're right, you're nothing alike. But you've both got this, this aura about you that drew me in. Your soul's aura. I loved you dearly, Morgana. I've got no right to ask anything of you, I know. But could you... Maybe smile for me. Just once is all I ask. <laughs> I can't do it. I should. I know I should. That would let us end things on a nice note. But I can't force myself to smile. It wouldn't be fair. Yeah. I guess you're right. Sorry for putting you in that position. I've... I've said my piece. I'm ready now. Okay. Uh, very well, then. Farewell, Jacopo. Until our souls cross paths once more in the boundless sphere of fate. Goodbye, Morgana. You couldn't have done anything more for him. Such as? I won't deny that my feelings about him are complicated. But the things he did to me, they eclipse all that. Merely learning the truth, hearing how he felt, is nowhere near enough to erase that. Couldn't you at least put a little hope in your next lives? That maybe you two could try again. No. No, I can't. I don't want to encounter him again, ever. Then, if nothing else, could you try not to forget what he did save you, that he did save you once? I suppose, though my salvation, Michelle, was not ultimately at his hands, I was watching to the very end. It may have all been an illusion constructed from the memories of everyone's souls. But that didn't make your actions any less real. The things you said to me, your earnest desperation. Learning the truth is only partly why I decided to release their souls. The biggest reason, however, was seeing how far you went for me. If you hadn't been there for my death, if you hadn't done what you did, then I would not have freed them. Ah, nonetheless, is it unfair of me to wish you'd shown him that smile instead? Morgana. Well, that's the last of them. Shall we be off now? The front door should open, now that I'm not willing it closed any longer. Shall we take our leave of this house? <sighs> oh, I feel like I should save at this point because I don't know what this is trying to insinuate. Um, there's one more stop. There's still one more soul that needs releasing. The, the one in the window, the painting. Um, a be my guide. It's 
still holding Morgana's hand, I made my way to the wall where the landscape painting hangs. You told me to come back if I ever figured out your name. Wait, have you figured it out? Oh, wow. I did... George's. Hey, I'm Michelle. Hello. <laughs> How'd you figure out it, it was me? Of course I'd recognize my own brother. One sec, I'm just gonna have to pause. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> of course I'd recognize my own brother. Well, granted, I didn't recognize you at first. <clears throat> it's not every day your big bro winds up as a painting, huh? It came as quite the surprise when I finally made the connection. Wait, when did you make this connection? I'll bet it did. <clears throat> Hold on a minute. You two are brothers? I assumed you two. Oh, hello there. Quite the companion you've got there, Michelle. So what brings you two to my little corner of the house? I've decided I'm going to extinguish the mansion. Oh really? Well isn't that something? You act like I just told you what I'm having for supper. Oh, sorry it's Morgana. You act like I just told you what I'm having for supper. This place is going to disappear. Forever. Well yeah, sure, but what brought about this? I've lost interest in cursing them. Ah, now that's some good news. You seem to get along surprisingly well with her. Time out the hoo-ha and nobody else to talk to do that to you. Not that she ever gave me the time of day much. You expect me to stand here and listen to your yammer on, on for hours on end? The only thing you're good for is tossing rubbish into. Wait. So she was the one who put the master bedroom key in the painting? That she was. Just tossed her right on and without even asking. Why would you get rid of the key to my room? I had no use for it. And being in that room always made me uncomfortable. It has this terrible warmth to it. I couldn't stand it. Ah, sure glad she only tossed the key though. Would have been bad if she'd thrown me out with it. I didn't see the need. I did find it curious there was a soul here I hadn't summoned, but you were ultimately harmless. So I simply pretended you weren't there. So she ignored him for hundreds of years. Wow. I understand now what you meant, Michelle, when you said this world didn't belong only to me. Your brother was able to find his way here, because it's a place deeply bound to your soul. I'm no expert on none of that spiritual stuff. All I know is one day I was just here. Here and uh, full of regret. So if I had to guess, I'd say I probably ended up here because I wanted to be somewhere I could feel you, Michelle. George is surprising. I would have thought it was the, um, the other brother. Which I've now forgotten his name. Um... George's. Would you be so kind as to let me apologize? I know quite well how sorry you are. You've already apologized once, besides. I went years not seeing you, not hearing from you, not having any idea what you thought about me. So when I got that painting, it was a huge blow to me emotionally. But talking to you again has reminded me what kind of person you really are, George's. You didn't mean to hurt me. Nope. Honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. Mum said paint it, so I painted it. And when she told me she'd sent it off to you, I didn't really think anything of it. It never even crossed my mind to think about how you felt out there, all alone. 
the kind of pain you were going through just because of the way you were born. When you're not the one on the receiving end, it's easy to completely, to be completely blind to your own actions. It never even occurred to me that we'd essentially ex exiled you, Michelle. Not until it was all over. Really, all I can say is sorry you got stuck with such a dope for a brother. All I had to do was think about it for two seconds and I would have realised what we were doing. And you know, at the time I thought, what's it matter if you're a guy or a girl? You're still you. But I was wrong. It's not that simple. I can only imagine someone coming up to me one day saying, nah, you're actually a girl. And everyone I care about suddenly not wanting anything to do with me. What a drag that be. I'm really sorry, bro. It's okay, Georges. I forgive you. Thanks. I wanted so badly to see you and Didier again, Georges. <clears throat> and while I didn't get the chance in life, I'm still glad to have the opportunity to talk to you now. To hear the things you never got to say. It pains me to see you reduced to this form. But knowing that it's a result of overwhelming regret, that you were just that desperate to find me again, it warms my heart. Hmm. Oh, what on earth was that? You try my damned not to burst into tears. I don't think it worked very well, though. Does the canvas look wet? Could you feel it for me? I, uh, I think I'll pass. Not feeling up for any brotherly love? Honestly, I'm relieved to see you're still the same George as I always knew. <laughs> Changing it really my thing, after all. I suppose it isn't. I'm... This doesn't sit right with me. What? Why not? You're letting him off the hook far too easily, Michelle. I know very well just how much pain that painting caused you. Might as well have been what resurrected me. I've moved past that, though. Make him pay for what he did. Scribble on him. <laughs> Do what? Scroll your anger all over this that ridiculous painting. But I'm not angry. Now that's a damn fine idea if I ever heard one. You most definitely need to pay me pay, Michelle. Uh, charges? Go on, hit me with everything you got. Scribble away. I, even if I wanted to, I have nothing to draw with. Just use your finger and I'll trace it out for you. Come on, what are you waiting for? He really wants me to draw on him, doesn't he? He more than deserves it, Michelle. Bring it on, Michelle. <laughs> this conversation got bizarre fast. Uh, okay, okay. I'll draw on you. Oh, really? Oh my. Now what? Now that is downright ghastly. What? You might actually have potential, Michelle. The voodoo dolls are the last thing I expected from you. Four of them at that. And a demonic being along th alongside them? Oh, I can just feel your burning rancor, Michelle. <clears throat> That's not what I drew at all. What? Then what is it? It's not important. Is that not the family together? Mother, Didier, Georges, Michelle, and the cat. Now that that's finished, I think it's time we all took our leave. Oh, I can come too? Well, I might need a little help with that, Michelle. As you can see, walking in one of my talents. That's all right. I'll carry you. Careful taking me off my hook. By all means, feel free to drop him, Michelle. It's nice that it was George's, but I suppose Didier is not here. Didier didn't care. I must say, that is rather a rather amusing sight. Look at that smile. A bit maniacal. It's definitely not every day you get to see a full-grown man turn painting being hauled down a spooky hall by his little bro. George's. 
It does make me wonder, though. Are you two really brothers? I have a hard time believing you share even a drop of blood with this obnoxious lout, Michelle. We are brothers, right, Georges? What, what? Don't you start questioning it too, Michelle. We are absolutely positively 100% brothers. She has a good point, though. We don't even look that much alike. No, no shock, fa no shock family plot to us here. I've known you since you were a baby, Michelle. Maybe you were secretly illegitimate, Georges, not me. You're not going to let go of this, are you? <laughs> I'm just playing with you. Oh my god, you just laughed? Yes. What? I didn't get to see it. What was it like? Give me all the details. An ordinary laugh. Is the world ending? It's not that big a deal. I laugh just like everyone else. No, you most certainly do not. Nope, you definitely don't. Well, so much for my tearful reunion with the brother I always knew and loved. Anyway, since we're breaking character here, how about one from our favourite witch too? And no cackling, that doesn't count. Excuse me? Why would you want me to? Because every time I've seen you smile, it's never been about anything good. Plus, now you've got your face back, you're actually quite the looker. <laughs> oh, go on, give me a big old grin. Not happening. Come on. Okay, fine, if you don't want to do it for me, pretend it's for Michelle. But <clears throat> what do I have to do with anything? You can do it for old Michelle, can't you? Show him those pearly whites, girly. Oh, if you insist, I suppose I can smile for Michelle, but only him. <laughs> Excuse me, what was that supposed to be my voice? Uh, because I do not sound anything like that. <laughs> Look at you all puffing your cheeks and red in the face. George's. Try not to tease her too much. Ugh, don't know how anyone can stand you. It's like every word that comes out of your mouth exists solely to ruin the mood. You know, maybe it wouldn't hurt to lighten up a bit. This is the end of a long journey. That doesn't mean we have to make it a somber and uptight affair. I am genuinely not sure how I feel about you. The most somberly uptight man I know telling me to lighten up. You got a point, but I'm not that bad, am I? Anyway, shall we be off now? That we shall. The witch and her band of merry men departs. I'm not sure if one person in a talking painting constitutes a band. Giselle, I know we'll find each other again. I have faith we will. We'll cast away this mansion's darkness. Then I'll await your return, no matter how long it takes. Yes, I think it's time we took our leave. Having finished what we set out to do, and retrieved George's as well, we make our way to the mansion's entrance hall. The large door stands there, firmly shut, holding in the darkness as it has for countless generations. That time is almost at an end, the door ready to be opened, to end the cycle and begin anew. Been a painting for all these years, I've never realised just how big a place this was. All I ever got to see was a hallway and maybe a couple of doors. I mean, talk about dull, you know. Feels like I'm on an adventure exploring a whole new world, a very, very dark world. Michelle, would you mind shutting him up? If only it were that simple. Can you blame me for being talkative? It was a lonely life. That would be fine if you had any concept of the appropriate time and place to be chatty. Are you aware of where we are right now? The entrance, by the look of things? Precisely. 
The end to a centuries long act of vengeance is but a few feet beyond that door, and you're chatting away like it's another day at the court. Try to maintain at least a semblance of gravity if you would. I'm starting to notice you're rather ceremonious, aren't you, Morgana? This is a day to be celebrated, not to be all stiff and no fun allowed. Are you not at all worried? There's no guarantee any hope lies beyond that door. After all, when the mansion disappears, so too will we. And that is the great, rightful state of things. Our present forms may cease to exist, but our souls will live on. So long as they do, we will eventually return to the world. Let us press onwards, not fearing a temporary end. Well said, Michelle. If I had feet, just sweep me off my right off them. Georges, I'm beginning to wonder what would happen if I threw you at the wall. <laughs> now, now, let's not do anything hasty. Oh, for God's sake. You're the guide. So let's go then, shall we? Morgana's right. There's a severe lack of gravity to the affair. Thanks to George's lackadaisical nature, whatever fear I had is gone as well. His ever-playful interactions bring me back to when I was alive, to when it was me and my two brothers. Fond memories of the times we had together, the admiration I had for them, of me chasing after them. Nothing could possibly replace those days, and I'm glad I had a chance to reflect on them, if briefly, before the end. I take a few steps forward stopping just in front of the door and Morgana steps up beside me. I envision the light that lies beyond it, radiant and white, waiting to rip through the darkness. The light we seek, that we've long sought. I take in a deep breath, look up at the door, place my hand on its hard surface and push it open welcoming the future it holds. Burn the witch. What? Crucify the impure. We take one step back, then another. What we find outside is not a blinding realm of light, but churning blackness and stench of blood and rust. Metal clanks, growing louder with every, each heavy footstep. The approaching night. Did you? Death to the unholy. Three days and three nights hanged upon the cross, purified by the fires of heaven. Death. Uh, what, what's going on? I... I... I never summoned this thing. Even though we're no longer holding hands, I can feel Morgana trembling. She's no longer the witch, the once absolute ruler of this domain, but a frightened young girl, placing my arm around her shoulders and pulling her in. I stare half dumbfounded at the night. It is our holy duty as knight of the church to deliver punishment unto the heathen who made a pact with the devil. The, the night draws nearer and nearer, its movement sluggish but constant. Didier, wait for real, crucify the witch, cast judgment upon the demon. Uh, huh? The word witch coming from the delirious vengeful phantom's mouth proves far more distressing for Morgana than me. What, hold on. What's D doing here? Please, come to your senses, Didier. I know it's you. Judgment, crucifixion, execution. N I'm, I'm not... I'm not a witch. The knight is partially occluded by the dark, wreathing miasma enveloping him, but he bears the same muscular build as the Didier I knew in life, and he's unwaveringly determined to see us executed. Didier, this is not 
her hope to reunion with God did he? Why, after so very long, is this how the three of us find each other again? Images flash through my mind. The day I left the Bollinger, est Bollinger estate, when Didier promised me he would one day meet again, then each giving me a hug before I climbed into the carriage. First Didier, then George's. Is this my fault? Is he here because I wish to be reunited with my brothers? Is this the way fate chose to grant that wish? Burn the witch! Ah, uh, well, look at that. Guess I'm not your only blockheaded brother, huh? Georges. Before you get any bright ideas, Michelle, it's not your fault our long-awaited family reunion didn't quite go as planned. Just like me, D cursed himself. Only it seems that his was a whole lot more powerful. God, I really didn't pay a lick of attention to either of you, did I? The unclean witch must be purified from this world. It is my duty. Hey D, are you in there? I shoved a whole lot of crap onto your plate. Keeping up the family name, taking care of mum, just about everything I could leave to you I did. I must uphold the honour of the family name. And then when it was all over, I blamed you for killing our little brother. I mean, he did kill Michelle. I was convinced that he could do anything, that you were stronger than anyone. Crucify the witch. I'm sorry, Dee. Burn the witch. He continues his plodding march forward, seemingly unaffected. Impossible to tell if George's words are getting through to him. Stop, Didier. Please. My words don't seem to be either. Didier. He's closing in on us. We're running out of space to retreat. All right, D. If that's how it's got to be. But just this once, okay? The knight takes another heavy, merciless step toward us. The exit's right there. But we're backed up against the wall. The end was almost within our grasp. Yet it seems so hopelessly far away now. Please, did ye, don't do this. I know you don't actually want to hurt anyone. Did ye? The knight raises his sword, thrusting it forward with a sharp whoosh. Death. But then, breaking free from my grasp, the painting leaps into the air. I'm really sorry. You got stuck with a pair of dolts for brothers. George's. The next second, my eldest brother's blade pierces George's. George's. George's! His form wavers momentarily before fading into the darkness, his voice lingering behind. Don't worry about me, Michelle. I got my share of redemption already. I know we can be a bit of a pain, but do for Dee what you did for me, would you? Now go on, call out to him. Suck in a big old breath, and call out to our brother with everything you've got. G Georges! It is my duty to punish them pure. Grah. To uphold the Bollinger name. Did ye? Despite having already stabbed Georges, the knight continues his march. Blade pointed straight at me. I clench my teeth and glare at my old eldest brother. Running is out of the question. This doesn't have to go on any longer. It is my duty as the eldest son. You deserve to be free from your bonds as well. Be gone from this world. Didier. I shout his name with every ounce of air in my lungs. His eyes go wide and his blade swerves, of course, missing my heart. <laughs> and piercing my gut instead. Did ye? It's okay, you can let go now. It's not your responsibility anymore. 
You have no duty to anything anymore. Did ye? I reach a hand out for my brother. Blood spells from the hole in my abdomen in rhythmic sparks. And I, feel, I can feel something hot rising in my throat. But that doesn't stop me. It doesn't stop my hand crawling through the air toward him. He's my brother. I have to do whatever I can for him. Free him. Bring him back. Did ye? There's nothing here. In need of your judgment. With shaking fingers, I clasp my brother's arm. I squeeze, holding on with what vigor remains, and give another shout. Look me in the eyes, did ye? Please. Hear my voice. Hear your brother's voice. I can't stand to lose anyone else. If you come to your senses, then George's sacrifice will have been in vain. If you don't come to your senses. It's time for you to break free. For all three of us to be free the curses we placed on ourselves. Did ye, please? I hear a sound that's somewhere between a grunt and a grasp. My vision's gone blurry, so I blink hard several times, clearing my eyes to get a better look at him. Did ye? I see his face, twisted in anguish. Michelle? Did he? Oh, thank goodness. You heard my voice. Did I... Did I do this to you, Michelle? It's nothing. I've made the same terrible mistake once more. Did he? I caused you harm, attempted to take your life. It's all right, did he? Michelle, release yourself from the chains that bind you. But I... Those aren't your duties anymore. You don't have to protect the family name. Or uphold the order standards. You can do as you wish. Uh, punish me for my wrongdoing. Please, Michelle. Punish me. Didier. Cast judgment upon me. It's all... All in the past. Judgment is not necessary for anyone. That doesn't change what I did. I killed you. I hanged you from a cross. I must be made to pay for my sins. Punish me, Michelle. I implore you. Didier. I think I know now why you never removed your helm that day. Oh, one sec me back <sighs> why you remain silent for the whole ordeal <clears throat> Michelle you were crying weren't you weeping for me your tears are atone enough for me Michelle you bore a great deal of responsibility in life to Bollinger's firstborn, you were obligated to protect the family's honour. And as a knight of the church, you were tasked with the duty of my execution. You had no other choice. I sincerely believe there was nothing else you could have done. I bear no grudge against you. <clears throat> no resentment for the decisions you forced to make. And I certainly don't curse you. Let's just... Forget it all. It's long over and done. Still, still it was a mistake I never should have made. I took the life of the purest soul I know. There is no honor in that. Did he? Put protecting the family name above protecting my actual family. You trusted me. You believed in me to the very end and I killed you. I knew what I was doing. I knew you weren't cursed. I knew you weren't a witch. I knew you were not even a child. You were never unclean. You were my brother, your family. And I robbed you of your life. There's no one in this world more unfit to be a knight than me.
You don't have to be a knight anymore. <coughs> you don't have to be the Bollinger's firstborn son. Deciding not to wear those labels won't make you any less the brother I always loved. <laughs> I'm honored to have been born into the same family as you. Michelle, there's something I never had the chance to tell you, did ye? All my life, I looked up to you, admired you, and I still do, even now. Ugh. Ugh. But there's a next life awaiting us. I hope we can be brothers again, did ye? Would you mind if I wished for that? No, no, of course not. Please do. And I hope you'll allow me to wish for the same. I love you, Michelle. My dear little brother. Upon those words, Didier's phantom begins fading away. A white mist that almost looks like it's made of undulating particles of light rises up around him. Before he's completely enveloped, I catch a glimpse of the tears streaking his cheeks. It's the first time I've ever seen him crying. I attempt to give him a smile in return, but if I were to guess, I'd say it probably looks rather forced. The fact that I'm fighting back tears at the same time certainly isn't doing anything to make it convincing. Before he's completely faded away, I wrap my arms around my brother's shoulders, much like he did for me on the day of my exile, not as an eternal farewell, but as a promise we'll meet again. Didier Georges Right now, in this moment, I have no regrets about having been born a Bollinger. All I have is great pride. So I pray that one day, be it ten or a thousand years from now, the three of us could be reunited. I've got a number of things going through my mind right now. Morgana. I'm just not sure how to put any of it into words. Don't worry, those words say everything. You can... You can cry if you want. I won't mock you, I promise. No, I won't cry. I'll save my tears for our reunion. Oh, that painting didn't have to get self-destroyed. You'll be fine, I'm sure. I have faith. And as you know quite well, wishes do come true. Would you mind giving me a hand, Morgana? going to need a little help getting back up. After a moment's pause, she hesitantly extends her fleshless hand, clasps the bones and with her aid pull myself to my feet. Blood spurts from my gut as I do. There's not much in the way of pain, strangely, only creeping exhaustion. I feel like my legs will give out if I so much as give them the chance. Leaning on Morgana, we take our way back to the we make our way back to the entrance. You're you're not going to disappear, are you? Don't worry, Morgana. I won't disappear. Alright. Let's open the door together. Bring light into the world of darkness. Move forward, 
start anew, brighter. Let's. I take in a deep breath. Look up at the door. My eyes on the future. It's time to open the door. Not to an ending, but the door to a new beginning. May the world that awaits us be filled with light. Immersed in a near blinding light, we press onward. It's white in all directions, not the tiniest speck of colour to contaminate it. In fact, the concept of direction doesn't seem to exist in this world. Only pure, never-ending white. Actually, no. That's not right, now that I consider it. I was thinking of white as an absence of colour. But white, the colour, fills this plane. It's all, it's all disappearing. We made the right choice, didn't we? Yes, this is how it is meant to be. <coughs> You're a rather impressive man. I hope you realize. Not only did you free three trapped souls, you also saved your brother. I didn't do any of that alone. Without help, I doubt I would have made it this far. I would have shattered yet again until nothing was left. And Giselle gave you that strength. He did. So, what? You're going to wait here for her? I am. In that condition, I won't let myself disappear before she's made it back. Do you remember the warning I gave you in the mansion? About how, if a soul is damaged and destroyed, it's wholly and utterly erased from existence. Never to return in any shape or form. If you lose much more blood, that's what will happen to you. You'll be erased forever. Don't worry, I won't let that happen. You push yourself too hard, Michelle. I feel like you're hurt in some way almost every time I see you. Though I suppose about half of that would be my doing. You may have caused me some pain, but I also wouldn't be here without you. What? I mean it. If you say so. Besides, I've practically only ever seen you hurt too. I suppose so. Whatever form your soul may assume in your next life, I'll be praying there's far less pain in it for you. This is why I'll never get along with you. I was concerned about others. Can I ask you something? If you are to be born again, you wanted to be in a fully male body. That's what I've always wanted, so yes, I would. In your next life, if you have one, do you want to see Giselle again? Absolutely I do. And what if you could only have one or the other? Which would you choose? Do you even need to ask? No, I suppose not. You know, I'm neither a witch nor a saint, just an ordinary powerless soul now, so my wishes aren't likely to cause any more miracles, but I think I'll wish for something anyway. For what? Not telling. <laughs> That's the first time she's properly smiled. Well, I'll be off then. All right. I didn't think it'd be so difficult to 
come up with parting words. You can say whatever you like. The first thing that comes to mind is fine. Okay. Then I'll say to you the same thing I said to them. Farewell, Michelle. Until our souls cross paths once more in the boundless fear of fate. Farewell, indeed. If, however, if, by some infinitesimally low chance, we do happen to meet again, would you be my friend? Organa. Absolutely, I would want it any other way. I'm not a nice person, you know. I'm nothing like the white-haired girl. I'm sure to be off-putting and rude, to cause you much grief and pain. Don't worry. I'm resilient enough to handle a little pain without pulling away. Fine as you are, you don't need to change. So let's meet up in our next lives and become good friends. Not good friends, and not acquaintances either. Just plain friends. Understood. Understood. <laughs> I'm rather looking forward to it. Now, this is goodbye for real. So I suppose I'll part with some uncharacteristic honesty. I'm glad to have had you in my life, Michelle. And thank you for everything. Morgana. Farewell, until our souls cross paths once more. It's so quiet, so unbelievably desolate. Giselle, you endured centuries waiting for me to return. I'll wait right here for as long as I must. feel the mansion, that gathering place for the parted fading away. I did it, Giselle. I broke the curse. I cast off the darkness. I saved Morgana and all the other souls trapped there. I couldn't have done it without you. I miss you, Giselle. All I want is to see your face, to hear your voice, feel your warmth, tell you how much I loved your smile. I know I said I wouldn't let myself disappear until you came back. I'm wishing with all my might for my body to hold out. But it doesn't seem to be working very well. I'm coming to realize as I grow weaker. The will of one man is nothing in the face of the will of the universe. Where are you, Giselle? I can't see you anywhere.
I can see right through my hands, Giselle. My lower body is already gone. The rest of it is following. I hope you'll still be able to find me, even without a body. lost my voice now, Giselle. I don't have much left to lose. I'm dissolving into the light. Say my name, Giselle. I want to hear you say my name. I'm here, waiting for you. Where are you, Giselle? Am I making it through to you even a little? I... I need you. I can't allow myself to disappear until you've returned. Michelle. <gasps> finally, I finally found you. I'm sorry it took so long. Don't worry, Michelle. I know that's you. I'll always be able to recognize you, no matter what. You don't have to be afraid. I wouldn't have made it out if it weren't for you, Michelle. A ray of light reached deep into the darkness, all the way down to where I was lost. It was a light more radiant than anything I've ever seen. So much so I couldn't hold back my tears. You fought so very hard. You broke the mansion's curse, released it from the darkness. I was right about you. You are strong. Immeasurably so. Can you hear me, Michelle? Sorry for keeping you waiting so long, for letting you deteriorate like this. But thank you. Thank you for waiting. Now it's time for us to return back to our rightful places. So please, Michelle, don't disappear on me. Don't let your soul's flame be extinguished. I beg you, keep holding on. There's still so much I need to tell you. I want to hear your voice. I want to feel your arms around me once more. I don't care when, as long as I can have that someday. So that means I need you, not, I need you to not disappear on me. Michelle. 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 
I believe in you, Michelle. I believe you're still there, that you're still holding on. So I ask that one day you'll come and take my hand again. Wow. Twenty-seven. Twenty-one? Yeah, sixteen. Jeez, I didn't think they were going to list the, the, the age of death for everyone. It's kind of grim. Oh my, is this the end? It looks like the end. Wait. Jacopo Berzati, Age of Death, 26 and 67. Oh, right, okay, the first Lord, and then the second Lord. Yukimasa Eda, the Swordsman, Age of Death, 25. So he was Japanese, I'm assuming. Mel Rhodes, Age of Death, 17 and 24. Oh, and the two lives that they had, that's what this was. Wait, he was 67? Oh, yeah, he did die of old age. Maria Campanella, Age of Death, 24. Pauline Asama, Age of Death 22. Nelly Rhodes, Age of Death 14 and 18. Didier Bollinger, Age of Death 37. Georges Bollinger, Age of Death 42. Oh, Georges was the eldest. I can't believe we've gotten to the end. Feels like so long ago that I started this. Oh, where are we? Flaxen haired boy. Oh. Hello, anybody in there? Class is about to start and last I checked the teacher never came in through the window. Oh right, uh, just a second. I've been doing that a lot lately, just staring out the window. You watching for something or just spacing out? There's this girl who's usually out there around this time every day. Right over there. See her? Hmm. Ah, that one. Looks like she's got, she goes to the junior high a few streets down. That's what I thought. But look at her hair, that flaxen colour. It's almost the exact same colour as mine. I can't get her out of my mind. What? Oh, really? If you're that interested, why not go have a chat sometime? I don't know. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Obviously, you've got to go with the old classic. Hey, baby, want to get some ice cream? <laughs> that sounds like a great way to get slapped. I'm not trying to pick her up. You're lying to yourself, man. No, I just, I don't know, I like, I'm curious, that's all. And I'm curious what makes your head work, because it sure ain't what everyone else's runs on. Now get moving, it's almost time for class. Ah, wait, I'm coming, I'm coming. I wonder what her name is. Is that supposed to be Mel and Nelly? Hey, did you hear about the new ice cream shop that just opened up down by the bus stop? I did, I did. And I hear their mint is super good too. Ah, now I want to try it. Wait, Black's in here, girl. What do you say? Want to go check it out? Let's go. Get some of that mint with a big pile of chocolate chips on it. Oh, I know. I'll get a double scoop. Ah, that sounds amazing. I'm going to get a double too. I bet the line's going to be crazy. We better get off, get going or... Uh, ah! Hmm. What is it? There's a cute boy who goes to that school there. And I think they just locked eyes for a second. Oh, what's he look like? A prince. Oh my god. It is Mel and Nelly. A prince? <laughs> Seriously. Don't you be making fun of princes now. You're not nine, you're fourteen. And you still haven't grown out of your fairy tale face? Like, uh -huh, oh my god. Hm. Just you wait. One of these days I'll meet a real prince and then you won't be laughing anymore. Like you'd ever be able to get a real prince's attention. 
hey, that's not very nice. Jerk, blockhead, meanie. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. Fine. I'll show you one day. That is my prince. Wait, do you think he's a prince in this life? We couldn't be luckier to have a talented engineer like yourself assigned to our branch. You give me too much credit, sir. You don't give yourself enough credit. I've seen your record, and you come highly recommended from HQ. I've got high hopes for you. The higher your hopes, the greater the fallout when I make a mistake, which frightens me. Huh. What you call a mistake is what we generally refer to as a great accomplishment. I don't think I've ever met anyone as close to the perfect human being as you. I am far, far from perfect. <clears throat> you Japanese really are a humble lot, aren't you? Huh. Ah. Uh, hmm, what is it? I, I thought I just saw a woman I recognised. Ah, we get a lot of tourists from your parts of the world around here. She's not Japanese. <clears throat> no, I must have been imagining it. This is my first time in France, after all. France? Oh, was she not... Was she... Was, um... Thingy... Was she French? Black-haired woman. The art museum. Shopping. Oh, who's the blonde? How could you take a vacation to France and not want to see the art? We were all we were there all yet day yesterday, and you agreed before we left today would be shop would be a shopping day. That was before I realized just how big it was, just how many beautiful paintings they had on display. There's no way one day is enough to see it all. One whole day of my vacation bored out my skull. Not like you can eat the stuff, so what goes what good is it anyway? Please. How about this? We go to a different museum, just not art this time. Oh. What kind of museum if you don't want to look at art? A torture museum. I think I hate you. Lighten up. You'll tell me you don't want to see centuries of torture devices from all around the world? Absolutely not. Then you stick to the plan and go shopping. Ah, uh, have it your way. But you didn't have to be so... Watch out, behind you! What? Ah! Uh, God damn the heart. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Learn to watch where you're walking, why don't you? And if you're still so desperate to make a damn ruckus, go find a cafe somewhere out of the way. Well, excuse me. I apologise, didn't I? No need to be such a dickwad. Have you ever heard of talking? Or is yelling the only thing you're capable of? This is why I can't stand tourists. Have some dumb ca damn consideration for the people who aren't here just to fool around. For the love of God. The hell's got your panties in it? And he's gone. That sure was something. If something is right. An insufferable asshole, more like. Oh my god, of course it's um, Pauline. Was it Pauline? <coughs> not Paul. No, Pauline was the woman's name. Um, Maria. That's what, Maria and Pauline. Burning hell, motherfucker. <laughs> that said, I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. Nah, it's just your imagination. Wait, could that have been the Lord? Wavy-haired man. Are you there? The paper. Good Lord, the stock market is a damn mess. What a nightmare. The tourists don't know how to shut up. The French are a bunch of stuck-up snobs. The pizza's awful. Nobody knows how to make spaghetti. Maybe I should just pack up my bags and forget it all. What the hell is this? An article about the human voice? Scientists are studying the effect certain frequencies in the human voice have on the brain. Keep this mumbo jumbo out of the paper, my god. Save it for some paranormal or science mag magazine. Back to the stocks page. Ah, damn it, the wind got my hat. What is wrong with today? I believe this is yours. Ah, y yeah. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. Have a nice. Uh, hold on a second. Yes? 
Uh, first off, before I say anything, I am not trying to hit on you. Don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> now, have you met before? We have, yes. When and where? A long, long time ago. Much too long for you to remember. Excuse me? Our paths crossed in a mansion many, many years ago. I'm glad to see that you haven't changed a bit. I'm not particularly in the mood for jokes and supernatural nonsense today. I am quite serious. One more question. Do we have any shared acquaintances? We do, yes. Though I could not say whether she is here or not. Hopefully you have the chance to cross paths with her. I too am looking for someone. Oh, wait, is this... Giselle? <clears throat> have a good day, sir. Yeah, goodbye. <clears throat> There are memories, memories ingrained in my soul. Over the years, they've grown gradually more distinct. And now, at the age of 21, I remember everything. Were I to tell this to anyone, they would think me mad. So I've kept it to myself my whole life. I remember many ages ago, there was a mansion there I met and lost someone dear to me. There I waited for him to re Oh shit, this is just hell. <sighs> there I waited for him to return. I remember all the centuries I spent waiting. And I remember he almost lost his soul trying to save me. I am once again waiting for him, making my way to where that mansion once stood, a single red rose in the hand, a rose containing all my hopes, my dreams, my love, a prayer that might one day reach you. Roses make wonderful gifts after all. I probably sound like I'm out of my mind, waiting for a man who exists only in my memories, a man who, in my 21 years of life, I've never once even caught a glimpse of. That doesn't matter. Because I know how much she means to me. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I will wait. I will trust the memories burned into my soul. I don't know when he'll show up. Or if he even will. Maybe we'll never meet in this life. Maybe I'll wait until I've grown old and died. But should that happen... I'll continue waiting for you in my next life, and then the one after that, if I have to. I'll always be waiting, no matter how long it may take, how great the obstacles that stand in my way, or what form you may assume. I'll wait as long as it takes, Another hundred, another thousand years. So just promise you'll come back to me. Shall. I think that's the end. Just let the credits play, but... Don't even know what to say. It's one hell of an ending. Quite like that you, they have them in like another life. And all of them seem to be there. Um. Except for Michelle. 
We have Giselle waiting again and again, potentially for multiple lives. Playing the waiting game once again for Michelle to come back. Gotta give credit for, for having the patience. Having already had an, having to wait almost a thousand years before. What a story. been quite possibly the best visual novel just about the best visual novel I have ever experienced um, with the exception of Women Echo which I would um, rank just about the same levels as but in a different way it's like I'm, it's, a, it's a very different type of visual novel but equally as, as kind of as brilliant as this so I can't remember who it was that gave me the recommendation it was a commenter early on last year the year before god when did i start this but thank you this was um totally awesome Thank you for playing. Thank you for developing this game. Is it Novect? Novatel? I, I can't pronounce it. Um, the house in Fata Morgana. Don't worry. Who's this? You don't have to wait any longer. This is Michelle. Switch back. Giselle. I'm here for you. each other I mean I was actually thinking they were going to end it there on a the cliffhanger <sighs> there are memories memories ingrained in my soul I remember there once a mansion here in which many tragedies took place in which great pain was suffered which of what happened in those walls was unspeakable but they are events I should never have forgotten because amidst all the misfortune, I attained something irreplaceable. Giselle, there's so much I have to say, so much I want you to know, but I'm sure I'll have plenty of time to get to all that. So for the time being, allow me to say this. Your smile is the light of my life. 
I want to spend my days with you. With that smile always at my side. And nothing to get in our way. Ending 8? What? Is there multiple endings? Oh no. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I ask of thee, O oh Father, what is this? No, this is um, <clears throat> to bestow upon their souls thy blessing. Oh, I completed the game. Wait, why is it's changed? Oh my god! And I have to. Is it auto save? Yes. Look at that. God, what a drastic difference. The butterflies from uh, the girl with white hair. Oh. Well. Sorry for all the kind of um, pausing of the video. Quite so many interruptions today. Um, but it was worth getting this finished. By, um, it was worth continuing on today. Finally finishing the game. Though it did say ending 8. Now I'm, I'm wondering what the other endings are. But. Um, yes I'll leave. That's not going to be. I'm not going to do that as part of the playthrough. I think I, this this will be the end of my journey. In the house in Fatal Magana. For now. Well. For this uh, series. To all of you that have watched up to this point. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this as much of I, as I have. I apologise for the bad voice acting, especially in this last episode here where I've, I think I've been a bit more quiet um, because I don't want to uh, be heard. <laughs> it's kind of late right now. Um, but yeah, if you've got to this point and you've enjoyed the series, thank you. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this even a fraction as much as I have. This has been fantastic. Phenomenal. I didn't even I didn't expect the, the twists and turns that happened, especially in the kind of like end game. And um, where the witch um I mean the witch herself and then the unveiling of the witch and everything afterwards was mental. And even before that it was beautiful. So um yeah, this was <sighs> This was or this is the house in Fatrag Morgana. I am Ash Mannix. This is goodbye for now for this series, but hopefully, I mean, there'll be other things, other games to play, other things to do, but um, this was something special and I hope you enjoyed it. <sighs> but I'll end again with seeing it once more. This is the house in Fatter Morgana. I am Ash Mannix. And I'll bid you adieu.